Hey everybody, I'm going to help you by reading the Journal of Christopher Columbus from 1492. So here we go. Thursday, October 11th. Presently, many inhabitants of the island assembled. What follows is in the actual words of the Admirable in his book of the first navigation and discovery of the Indies. I, he says, that we might form great friendship, for I knew that they were a people who could be more easily freed and converted to our holy faith by love than by force gave to some of them red caps and glass beads to put round their necks, and many other things of little value, which gave them great pleasure, and made them so much our friends that it was a marvel to see. They afterwards came to the ship's boats where we were swimming, and bringing us parrots, cotton threads and skins, darts, and many other things. And we exchanged them for other things that we gave them, such as glass beads and small bells. In fine, they took all, and gave what they had with good will. It appeared to me to be a race of people very poor in everything. They go as naked as when their mothers bore them, and so do the women, although I did not see more than one young girl. All I saw were youths, none more than thirty years of age. They are all very well made, with very handsome bodies, and very good countenances. Their hair is short and coarse, almost like the hairs of a horse's tail. They wear the hairs brought down to the eyebrows, except a few locks behind which they wear long and never cut. They paint themselves black, and they're the color of the Canarians, neither black nor white. Some paint themselves white, others red, and others of what color they find. Some paint their faces, others the whole body, some only round the eyes. Others only on the nose. They neither carry nor know anything of arms, for I showed them swords, and they took them by the blade and cut themselves through ignorance. They have no iron, their darts being wands without iron, some of them having a fish's tooth at the end, and others being pointed in very various ways. They're all of fair stature and size, with good laces and well made. I saw some with marks of wounds on their bodies, and I made signs to ask what it was, and they gave me to understand that people from other adjacent islands came with the intention of seizing them, and that they defended themselves. I believed, and I still believe, that they come here from the mainland to take them prisoners." They should be good servants and intelligent, for I observed that they quickly took in what was said to them, and I believe that they would easily be made Christians, as it appeared to me that they had no religion, our Lord being pleased. will take hence, at the time of my departure, six natives for your highnesses. That they may learn to speak, I saw no beast of any kind except parrots, parrots on this island. The above is in the words of the admirable. Of the admiral. As soon as dawn broke, many of these people came to the beach, all youths, as I have said, and all of good stature, a very handsome people. Their hair is not curly, but loose and coarse, like horse hair, and all the forehead is broad, more so than in any other people I have hitherto seen. Their eyes are very beautiful and not small, and themselves far from black, but the color of the Canarians. Nor should anything else be expected, as this island is in line east and west from the island of Hierro and the Canaries. Their legs are very straight, all in one line, and no belly, but very well formed. They came to the ship in small canoes made out of the trunk of a tree, like a long boat, and all of one piece, and wonderfully worked, considering the country. They're large, some of them holding forty to forty-five men, others smaller, and some only large enough to hold one man. They're propelled with a paddle like a baker's shovel, and go at a marvelous rate. If the canoe capsizes, they all promptly begin to swim, and to bail it out with calabashes that they take with them. They brought skins of cotton thread, parrots, darts, and other small things, which it would be tedious to recount, and they give all in exchange for anything that, they, that may be given to them. I was attentive and took trouble to ascertain if there was gold. I saw that some of them had a small piece fastened in a hole that they have in the nose, and by signs I was able to make out out that to the south, or going from the island to the south, there was a king who had great cups of full, and who possessed a great quantity. I tried to get them to go there, but afterwards I saw that they had no inclination. I resolved to wait until tomorrow in the afternoon, and then to depart, shaping a course to the southwest. Sunday, October the 14th. These people are simple as regards to the use of arms, as your highnesses will see from the seven that I caused to be taken, to bring home and to learn our language in return, unless your highnesses should order them to all be brought to Castile or to be kept as captives on the same island. For with fifty men, they can all be subjugated and made to do what is required of them. 
Sunday, November the 4th. At sunrise, the admiral, the admiral again went away in the boat and landed to hunt the birds he had seen the day before. After a time, Martin Alonso Pinzon came to him with two pieces of cinnamon and said that a Portuguese, who was one of his crew, had seen an Indian carrying two very large bundles of it. But he had not bartered for it because of the penalty imposed by the admiral on anyone who bartered. He further said that this Indian carried some brown things like nutmegs. The master of the Pinta said that he had found the cinnamon trees. The admiral went to the place and found that they were not cinnamon trees. The admiral showed the Indians some specimens of cinnamon and pepper he had brought from Castillo, and they knew it and said by signs that there was plenty in the vicinity, pointing to the southeast. He also showed them gold and pearls on with certain old men, said that there was an infinite quantity in a place called Olito, and that people wore it on their necks, ears, arms, and legs, as well as pearls. He further understood them to say that there were great ships and much merchandise, all to the SK. He also understood that, for, that far away there were men with one eye and others with dogs' noses who were cannibals, and that when they captured an enemy, they beheaded him and drank his blood. This is from the Journal of Christopher Columbus during his first voyage, and documents relating to the voyages of John Cabot and Gaspar Corterreal, Clemens R. Markham, uh, edited and translated, London, 1893, pages 36, 37 to 68. All right, I hope that was helpful.